Hi, I'm Jim Jordan, speaking to you from Ashland, Oregon. And today I want to talk to you about Alzheimer's disease. And um, Alzheimer's, as most of us know, is a neurodegenerative disease. And a, the reason I'm talking about this today is a friend of mine who has been getting my, these video blogs said, um, she's in the healthcare field, she said, why don't you do, talk about Alzheimer's? She had recently lost her father to Alzheimer's. And I've come across many people, and the, the numbers increasing over the years that have early stages of Alzheimer's. And the sad part is that this is absolutely preventable. And potentially even, in many cases, you can slow down the process, the degenerative process, and even stop it. And in some cases can reverse it, if you know, if you understand the causes of Alzheimer's. So, um, I think there's five point some million people in America that have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but actually, like with any disease state, there's sort of an artificial point where you're diagnosed with disease, and prior to that point, certain numbers of symptoms or grades of symptoms, you're considered not to have disease, when in fact, many people are already in the beginning stages or pre-Alzheimer stages, of uh, neurological degeneration. And it, this is not something that's just genetic or accidental, and even though the, the mainstream medicine says they don't know the causes, there's some gen gene involved in it, that's nonsense. I mean, there was no Alzheimer's until the last, I mean, this is virtually unheard of until within the last 20 years or, or so. So what I want to talk to you about today is the causes, the known causes, and what you can do to start to reverse it. Actually, once you know the causes, you can just stop the things that are causing it or reduce the things that are causing it. So the number one cause in this neurodegenerative condition is toxic metal poisoning. That would be aluminum, mercury, lead, arsenic, but primarily mercury and aluminum. There's been lots of research on uh, correlation with uh, aluminum toxicity. People with Alzheimer's have a higher level of aluminum in their bodies than other, other, other patients. Mercury toxicity also damages the brain cells and the neurons. And those are the two most, most common, most important causes. So the first thing you want to do is to assess whether you have aluminum and or mercury toxicity. There's simple ways to do that that cost very, very little. What I use in my practice is a hair analysis and that can tell you the toxic uh, metals in your body and the mineral levels and the ratios of minerals. So there's many ways to do this and then there's also many things you can do to start to reduce your exposure and to pull out of your body, including the brain, the uh, accumulations of toxic aluminum and mercury. That's number one. Number two would be high homocysteine levels. Homocysteine is a toxic amino acid byproduct that is caused by basically um, damaged foods, uh, heat, high temperature heating of foods, oxidative damage, free radical activity in the body, and it's neutralizing, that the nutrients needed to neutralize it are B vitamins, like uh, B6, uh, B12, and folic acid, and other nutrients you can find in certain foods, like uh, trimethylglycine is a nutrient you can find in beets, and, and other, other foods. So there's ways to reduce the homocysteine levels, first by reducing the cause, which has to do with how we process the foods we eat, the overall amounts of free radical activity we're exposed to, and then there's certain nutrients you would take to start to reverse that high homocysteine level. That can be assessed through a, a standard a blood test if you request your doctor to, do, to test homocysteine levels. Uh, the third cause would be what are called mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are toxins put out by systemic yeast and fungus infections. And in my experience, many people, large percentage of people, I mean probably a third of the people I see have some moderate level, moderate or, or, or higher level of mycotoxin ex, uh, accumulation. And the high fungus and yeast is obviously driven by or contributed to uh, by excess sugar in the diet. Uh, toxic metals also cause the body to retain fungus and yeast. So there, there's sort of like an interaction between these causes too. So mycotoxins, heavy metals, high homocysteine levels are the top three things to deal with. Uh, nutrient deficiencies, including the B vitamin uh, deficiencies I talked about earlier. 
would include DHA, which is a, um, an omega-3 fatty acid. So DHA is the structural building block of the brain cells and the, and the retina, the eye. And many people don't have adequate levels of DHA. Um, cold water fish is the primary source. You can get it from other foods if your liver, uh, sort of flax seeds and other omega-3 vegetarian fats, if your liver is, a, liver is able to make the conversion of the omega-3 fats into the other the EPA and DHA, and often people have trouble with that because their livers are, are congested. So the primary nutrient deficiencies in Alzheimer's um, would be the DHA and the, and the B vitamins. Uh, there, there also could be other, other, uh, other nutrient deficiencies that are contributing to uh, immune system suppression and other, other cofactors that would be adding to this, the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's. And remember, we're not just talking about the diagnosed state of Alzheimer's. We're talking about memory loss, confusion, difficulty concentrating, difficulty planning, um, just overall mental degeneration. And people even that are not diagnosed with Alzheimer's have some degree of this. I have friends of mine, you know, myself included at times, my memory is not as good as it used to be, and their memories, they're, they're aware of it. So it's building up in the population. That's the bottom line, that this is something we have to take direct action to stop or it's going to increase. There's, there's no way it's just you're going to find some miracle cure from the medical profession on this. Uh, the next cause is the one that is least talked about, but I, I'd say I've seen this correlation for years now, is, is radiation exposure, electromagnetic field radiation exposure from cell phones, especially if you hold your cell phone close to your head you're going to damage your brain cells. Uh, there's no doubt about this. About two or three years ago, I had lost my cell phone and I didn't buy a new one for a few months, maybe two, three months, and my memory improved noticeably. Okay, then, then a family member thought it was necessary for me to have a cell phone still, bought me a cell phone for my birthday, and I now use it much less frequently. So cell phones, uh, computers, exposure to computers, electromagnetic fields from computers, wireless routers, all these things have a bioaccumulative effect, which actually also increase uh, fungus and myco, uh, uh, mycoplasma infection in the body, the radiation, which puts off more toxins, which contributes to neurological damage. So again, these are interactive, these causes. And the last would just be toxic chemicals that we're exposed to in the environment, pesticides, herbicides, fluoride, excitotoxins like MSG, aspartame, all these toxins are neurotoxins, they damage the brain cells too, and contribute to the generation of the, of the, of the brain. And I, a family, a friend of the family's, um, one of the, the, um, the husband of a friend of our family's, uh, di uh, died of Alzheimer's, and he was in, worked in the chemical industry, and I have no doubt that the primary reason for his degeneration was the massive exposure to chemicals he, was, he, he had in his, in his career. So um, the big thing is this is, a, is, a, is a, um, a condition that can be prevented. If we take action, addressing causation, not waiting for a miracle cure, not waiting till it's developed to a stage where it's very hard to reverse, but take action now. So um, my name is Jim Jordan. I'm a nutritional consultant, health and wellness coach based in Ashland, Oregon. I do consultations by phone and I do private consultations in person here in Ashland. There's assessments that can be done um, through questionnaires and some lab tests to see if you have toxic metal levels that are important to address. And then we can develop a program to uh, stop uh, the, the further decline if you have already started this Alzheimer's process or just if you have poor memory even. And definitely if you work hard enough, you can start to reverse this condition. So um, for those of you out there that are interested in talking to me. I offer a free 15-minute consultation to anybody who wants to talk to me that has questions about how we would work together. My number is 541-482-2250. My website is www.createvibranthealth.com. And thank you, and have a great day.